Now, Temasek is upbeat on India and has been consistently increasing investments in the country. Over a billion dollars is expected this year as well. Rohit Sipahi Malani of Temasek tells CNBC TV 18 that India is an attractive market and his fund is positive on consumer related sectors, including insurance, IT, pharma, and financial technology. Listen in. We're obviously not immune to market movements. And if you look at last year, uh, the Singapore market was down 15%. The HSCI index in Hong Kong, which is mostly China 8 shares, that was down 26%. And about two-thirds of our listed portfolio is in these two markets. So, you know, in that context, our portfolio was down 9%. So, you know, we obviously did much better than the markets in which we were operating in. But it's important to realize that these are just mark-to-market -market movements, right, on a particular date. They're not realized losses. So if you just take you know, the top three companies in our portfolio that we disclose, you know, Singapore Telecom, DBS, and China Construction Bank, uh, Singtel and CCB are over 10% since March 31st. DBS is up almost 5% since March 31st. So it's really, you're talking about portfolio value on a particular day, um, and so it's not really realized losses. And from our perspective, we're really looking at longer term returns. So what's more important to us is the underlying fundamentals of the companies. And from that perspective, we're quite confident that our portfolio is quite resilient. So does this also give you a nudge to really re-strategize your entire portfolio? And where does India really stand in the midst of all this? So, you know, firstly, in terms of just re-strategizing, um, you know, when you look at our portfolio over the last three, five, ten years, or whatever else, right, or more, we've almost consistently outperformed the indices in the markets in which we operate. Uh, but for us, that's not good enough. We've got to do even better than that because we're more an absolute return investor. So about five years ago, we said we want to shift the weight of our portfolio to have a greater exposure to sectors like technology, uh, insurance, consumer, uh, life sciences, uh, and energy and resources. And these five sectors accounted for 8% of our portfolio in 2011 and were 23% of our portfolio this year. So we've been actively reshaping the portfolio. Okay. And when we look at the returns that most of these sectors have got, with the exception of energy and resources, which for uh, the obvious reasons hasn't done as well, but most of the other sectors have actually had returns much higher than the rest of our portfolio. Hmm. So that reshaping is a constant exercise. We'll continue doing that uh, because that is what we think will give us sustainable long-term returns above our cost of capital. Now, on your second question on India, uh, look, I mean, India, today is the fastest growing big economy in the world, right? Uh, the macro is looking very good, you know, current account deficit, fiscal deficit, inflation under control. Uh, it doesn't have the issues that most other markets have around debt, demographics, deflation. Um, and actually, it's one of the few markets where capital productivity is actually increasing. So from all those perspectives, you know, India's, India's good. And, and from that perspective, last year was the year where we made the highest investments in India ever since the global financial crisis. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the last five years, we've been investing over a billion dollars a year on average in India. So how much did you deploy uh, last year? And uh, you, your uh, divestments have also been at record highs in the last financial year. So how much of divestment did you uh, really do? And what is the plan for this financial year? How much money are we seeing being pumped into Indian assets? So look, we don't disclose specifically how much we invest and divest, but as I said, last year was the most active year for us since the global financial crisis in terms of dollars we put into India. And I can also say that over the last few years, we've been seeing a steadily increasing trend in the amount we've been investing in India. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had, last year when we reported our total exposure to India by underlying assets it was about 4%. Right. This year, it's closer to 5%. So we have steadily been including, increasing our exposure to India. In terms of how much we'll invest this year, you know, ultimately we're very much a bottom-up investor. So it depends on what opportunities we see at the right valuations. There's no fixed amount, but we want to do more out here uh, because it is consistent with the themes that we're looking for. Looking at your returns for the last financial year, do you think that uh, you will now re-strategize also to be more aggressive in emerging markets like India? Look, I don't think anything has really changed in the last year. Like I said, it was just mark-to-market movements as of a particular date on March 31st. I think we have been consistently looking to uh, move our portfolio in favor of sectors that we see having secular trends. And India falls in that bucket. 
because India does have a growing middle income population, which is where the consumption themes come into play. Uh, India does have uh, globally competitive companies in sectors like pharma and IT, which is our theme of emerging champions and global champions. Mm -hmm. So clearly, you know, India is a core part of our strategy. Uh, and as I said, we've been steadily increasing our exposure over the years. Okay, that's very important. Temasek India saying.